Hi, I'm with the infamous Dr. Connie Mariano. Her patients were presidents and she was at the White House for all of Clinton's presidency, as well as the Bushes? Right, both Bushes, both administrations, the Bush Sr. and then uh, W. Bush uh, for the second time. And Dr. Mariano was in the White House's most intimate spaces, the Air Force One, in the limousines as the lead doctor during all that time. And I asked Connie to be the author of the foreword of my upcoming book, love coming home because I truly believe your best life has a potential to begin at home whether your home's rented or owned even if it's a home you don't like at all you can still set it up as a place for your family to thrive and I wanted Connie's perspective so that you could see how important your home environment is to your overall well-being do you believe from a health perspective that the way we set up our homes to thrive and function does truly affect our health and well-being? Absolutely. It's one of those basic necessities, not only of, of safety and structure, but it gives you a sense of security that you know you have a safe place that reflects your values, your comfort area, your protection. And I think it's, it's quite interesting when we look at names. I mean, I. I've always had the word house in my title, the White House Doctor, and I love that your book has home. Oh. And there's a huge difference between house and home. And what I love about your book, Jen, is that you show people how to transform the house to really what makes it a great home. Thank you. And I think I really, I really enjoyed reading your book. I appreciate that. As I enjoyed reading yours, her book is outstanding, by the way. And that's a really interesting perspective. And you were in the most intimate spaces at the White House. How was that set up as a home environment? Was it a home? It wasn't a home. It really is ceremonial. And it was from uh, um, John Adams' era on. Uh, George Washington never lived there in the White House. But it was really built, it was called the President's House, but it really wasn't it never a home. We know it's temporary. You can only live in it up to eight years, and then you're out of there. And in a lot of ways, it wasn't a refuge for them. It was a temporary space where they would have you know, state dining room parties, grand events, but it was never home. And all of them longed for their home, I think, when, whenever they're there. Did that impact you when you left your time at the White House and started creating your own home? It did, because I was always in search of a home. I always lived in either temporary housing or rented, because I was military for, for 24 years. And then when I retired from the Navy, moved to Arizona, that was a time to really build my home. And about uh, six years ago, my husband and I finally built a home here nearby, and that was the first time I ever experienced hiring a designer. And had I read your book, I think I would have done a better job because it was, a, it was quite painful for me to go through that process because I really didn't know what I was doing. And a lot of ways when I look at my house now, it wasn't truly reflective of me. It was, it was guided by the interior decorator. She did a great job, but I think had I had to do it again, listening and reading what your book guides me, it would be more personalized. It would really, truly feel like my home. And what I try to do in Love Coming Home is help anyone, whether they can have a designer or not have a designer, yeah. to really have those tools to be mindful in their home as it pertains to all their senses throughout the body. Because you know better than anybody as a doctor, we have five senses, six senses, <laughs> if you yeah. believe in your intuition, yeah. which I yeah. do believe you need to bring into your home. And when you ignore your sense of smell, your sense sense of touch, your sense of feeling, even your taste buds and your sense of hearing in your home, mm -hmm. it can affect everything. Because if you have jarring noises, that's got to be hard on your psyche to begin with. Right. It's sort of your inner sanctum. And I really believe every space has a particular energy. And if you come from a place where it's messy, it's, it's chaotic, you don't sleep well, you feel uneasy, you bring it into the next space. So they always say have the music, have the lighting, have the things that are comfortable that's really reflects you. And mm -hmm. so if you can come from a home that is really securely yours, that's a very personal and comfortable, then I think you thrive in terms of your creativity and your productivity. I appreciate hearing that from a world expert on health. That's really very powerful. But one of the things I love is kind of the gossip of behind the scenes of the intimate spaces of the White House and the transportation. I can't even imagine chasing the president on every motorcade where you see Bill Clinton, mm -hmm. she was there close at hand as well as on every single flight. What was that like? 
Well, you get to see them every day. You actually see them more than your own family. So they see you. You're on, you're on a first name basis. He'd call me Dr. Connie and I'd call him Mr. President. Easy to know, right? <laughs> and on every trip, you're always there. They always look for you. They know you by sight and they, and they drop into our personal space on Air Force One. There's a medical compartment that is aft of the personal compartment of the president. So the president always, whenever he goes to the rear of the plane to visit people, he always goes by our space. So we would always pop in and visit, and you always stand up at attention just to be respectful. He goes, oh no, sit down, he would sit down. If we were watching a movie in our space, he'd sit and have popcorn with us. I mean, it's really odd. Somebody you think you know is famous, is yeah. there, you know, one on one as close as we are, chatting away and joking. Wow. And, and just, you know, it's, it's a rare setting that a, do a doctor would see their patient every single day. You know, and you're following them around. And I used to joke with people, it's the only time a physician is actually in the home of a patient, can be 24 seven, and you can actually watch them be non-compliant. <laughs> That's so funny, there's nowhere to hide. You can't hide. How important is somebody's space to their overall health? It is tremendously important. I think what you feel inside is influence profoundly with the external environment. So if you're in a space that's chaotic, crazy, busy, and you don't thrive on that, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel tension, you're gonna have hypertension, you're not gonna sleep well. But if you're in a space that feels safe, comfortable, reflects what you want, you're gonna draw that in as well. So it's huge environmental inter interplay. And I think it plays a role no matter where someone lives, it, whether they're in a home that's rented or mm -hmm. they own it, mm -hmm. or it's a shared space, even one room or mm -hmm. a big mansion, we all deserve mm -hmm. to be healthy in the environment Absolutely. where we live. So do you think there's not like an income bracket that then suddenly they can set their environment up to thrive No, in it, any way? And you show it beautifully in your book. You know, you can say the way you show in your book, if you don't have a lot of money, and you don't have to have a lot of money to make your house your home, and you use very creative ways for people to do that. And I think your background, you talk about mine, you know, you came from very humble beginnings and worked very hard to, to promote and, and do the things you do. And you understand what it's like not having much money yeah. to, to create and design a home. I mean, you don't have to have a ton of money. It's very, very affordable for a lot of people to do that. You don't have to hire an interior decorator. You can read your book and find ways to create that, that space for yourself. I really love your book so much, not because Thank I you. wrote the, the foreword, which I'm uh, very honored to do that, but Thank I really you. love what it shows people to do, how to convert their space into their personal home. And so what I'm going to do is write prescriptions for my patients and my friends to get a copy of your book. <laughs> I'll tell them it's just what the White House doctor ordered. I love it. Thank you. What an endorsement. Thank I appreciate you. that from the bottom of my heart. Thank oh, you. It'll be a bestseller. We want that to happen. And to pick up a copy of Love Coming Home, Transform Your Environment, Transform Your Life, it's available for pre-sale right now and that it actually goes into the bookstores on August 21st.